And so speaking of informed strategic decisions, certainly the elephant in the room when you talk about hybrid workplaces and virtual work is what about all of our facilities? What are we going to do with our space? How much do we need? How do we know what space we need? Some of the clients we talk to are making really drastic changes. We have a healthcare client that has reduced from 50 buildings down to just 16. They kept their 16 largest locations so they can still serve thousands of employees, but that's a huge change. They're going to a uh, 2.5 to one desk sharing ratio. And I remember a couple of years ago, a, a 1.5 to one desk sharing ratio felt a little edgy. So 2.5 to one is a huge change. We have another client who was mid acquisition when COVID hit. And as they observed their employees really adopting virtual work and having a lot of success with it, they completely rethought their headquarter strategy post acquisition. And they ultimately moved their headquarters to a different location because it was going to be a better hub for that distributed workforce. So those are examples of really drastic changes. But the great thing about the hybrid workplace is you can make small incremental changes and still get a huge benefit. So on average, the lease and operating cost for a workstation is about $10,000 a year. So even decreasing your workspaces one, two, three percent can yield potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings. We have a workplace planning guide that we're going to share um, in our handouts. And in that planning guide, there is a section around cost savings. And there is a workplace strategy calculator that I really encourage all of you to download and play around with because it really proves out how you can make very small changes um, between your desk sharing ratio and your workspace density. How much square footage are you allowing per workstation? Pre-pandemic, the average was about 125 square feet. Today, considering physical distancing, we're looking at 200 to 250 square feet. But of course, the further out we get from the pandemic, that number is going to start to come back down. So you can really play around with those ratios, those densities, and identify areas where you can make very strategic decisions. If you can potentially uh, maybe reduce some of your workstations and lease out that additional space, or maybe you don't renew that additional space the next time your contract comes up. Or maybe you convert it all to collaborative space. In that case, you may not have a direct cost savings, but you're going to get a better return on the investment in that space because it's going to be more highly utilized. So a lot of ways that you can make small changes and really have a big impact. And like the previous example, it all really comes down to workplace data. The more data you have, the more strategic, and in this case, really even surgical, you can be in the decisions that you're making. Rhonda, what are your thoughts? Yeah, saving money with space is one way to, to save that money. It's, you know, looking at your space, maybe reducing it. But another one is to re ensure you're retaining those employees again, make sure they're satisfied. And yeah, surveys are one way to hear about that. But sensors are also going to provide that data. You know, you may have the person that never responds to the survey, never says to you that they don't like what's going on, but sensors can't lie. You're going to be able to put a sensor on these desks and really understand that utilization of, okay, no one's sitting over in these spaces. These spaces in this side of the building are always busy. These ones aren't. Okay. You can start to see desks that are popular or not. Well, what if you want to know why? You can ask the employee and they'd be like, I don't know. I just prefer to sit over there. They may be honest and tell you, I don't like the sound of the, the bathroom door shutting. Who knows? Either which way, you can also put those environmental sensors in those areas and really start to see, is there a noise issue or a difference between the popular spot and the non-popular spot? You look at some of those environmental issues that sometimes I don't even know why I don't like a space and I don't realize that it's hot, you know, or warmer than the other space. The other thing is, is really using those counters for your conference rooms. Um, if you've ever had issues in the past, you're probably going to have them eventually in the future year too. 
how many people are really using that conference room versus I have invited six people, you know, and only two show up. It's good to see some of those realistic expectations. So when you get these answers back through the data, you're going to be able to redesign or keep designing your space the way you are. So uh, people will like to use it. You're going to be able to retain some of those employees that really appreciate how you're using your space and setting it up for them to be successful in their job and how they do it.